morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, our Heavenly Parent Holy Community Oceania Hundoke with uh, on this Unshield Day with Reverend Arnold Ficker. Today being Saturday, the 10th of April or the 29th of February in the ninth year of Chongil Guk. So let's uh, begin by offering a bow to our Heavenly Parents and True Parents, Chariot, Kyombe, And let's recite our family pledge, both in Korean and English. Thank you. Kajon Mense E. Chonni Guk Chuin, Uri Kajon, Cham Sarangal Chunshimago, Hanil Pumonim Gua, Cham Pumonimil Moshio, Chonje Tepe Jok Kajon Itemo, Chunshim Jok Kajon Iteo, Kajon Esen Hyoja, Kuka Esen Chunshin. 세계에서는 성인, 천주에서는 선자의 가정의 도리를 완성할 것을 맹세하나이다. Family pledge number two. Our family, the owner of Chongyu Guk, pledges to represent and become central to heaven and earth by attending the heavenly parent and true parents. We pledge to perfect the dutiful family way of filial sons and daughters in our family, patriots in our nation, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth by centering on true love. And uh, uh, I'll offer the opening prayer today. Just going in prayer. Dear heavenly parents and our true parents, we're very grateful to be able to come together as a community of Oceania to really share your precious words, your, uh, expressing the, the heart and love of our true mother as we can share her life through her autobiography. We want to you know, really connect to her completely, that we recognize that she is the mother of peace and the only begotten daughter and that she is our mother and that you, our heavenly parent, are our parents. We want to show you that we are serious in fulfilling your will. We want to show you that you know, we can be someone that can be relied on. We want to have you know, the necessary uh, attributes that enable your providence to be moved forward unhindered. You, know, you have longed to embrace every one of your children. And we know that you know, restoration and rebirth has been provided to us because our true parents opened the way with the blessing of the Lamb and establishing you know, your kingdom and your lineage here upon this earth. And we are marching towards you know, truly establishing you know, a physical kingdom here upon this earth so that we can all live in peace and harmony and protecting each other. We want to be able to support our true mother as we head towards you know, the victory of you know, 2027 and that you know, next year in 2022, you know, the way is open for the unification of North and South Korea and that this opens the, the way for the, the world to be united. You know, the time has come you know, for humanity to become good again. You, know, you are only good and it's time for your sons and daughters to become only good, to separate ourselves from you know, the intense, excessive, selfish desire that it was produced by the fall and replace it with a heart of love and perseverance and endurance and you know, living for the sake of others. So we ask your presence here today as we listen to your words through you know, Reverend Arnold Ficker and that we can really you know, show our love to you by investing ourselves 100%. So we offer you this in our collective names as a community and in our names, John and Shizuomi as a blessed central family, Arju. Okay, thank you everyone. And uh, let's uh, uh, give uh, Reverend Ficker a, a warm welcome as he shares with us today. Thank you.
Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, <laughs> this morning, I'm also privileged to have this opportunity to share for us our Hundo cake on this uh, very uh, uh, important day, the ANSEIL. So I've prepared a, a short message from um, the way of uh, tradition, volume one. So um, I would like to share as we now uh, come, um, this time we, um, from the uh, True Mother's autobiography, we, we start to uh, learn about the um, uh, True Mother as uh, part of True Father, the, uh, the Messiah, together with True Father. So uh, uh, my topic this morning I want to share with us is uh, um, the, the Messiah. Um, and uh, I took the Hundo K from, uh, direct from uh, the way of tradition, volume one. So, um, as we all know, uh, we we come to meet the Messiah. Uh, all of us, we come to know the Messiah in different circumstances and also different ways we come to learn about the Messiah and come to know about the Messiah. So uh, this morning, I would like to share shortly about the mission of the Messiah and uh, who is the Messiah and um, our, our, what we should do as uh, uh, children uh, who came under the Messiah. So, um, so this morning, uh, uh, I'm still waiting. My computer still loading about uh, uh, for the PowerPoint. Um, So yes, now I'm connecting to the Can everyone see? Uh, yes. So, yes. Sorry, I'm using the camera, so I will use the other. I think we just look um... Can everyone hear me now? Okay, so I want to share this morning um, on the Messiah's mission, mainly. And uh, my hundoke is taken from uh, uh, the way of uh, tradition, volume one. Um, so as I've uh, mentioned earlier, we came to know the Messiah and also came to uh, meet the Messiah in different ways and under different circumstances. So um, 
this morning I want to share uh, shortly about uh, what is the mission of the Messiah and who is the Messiah and uh, what we should be doing as um, children who came under Messiah's lineage. So uh, based on the way of tradition, his, uh, the book said the Messiah is uh, the one who bears your burden and your indemnity. So God sent the Messiah to change our unhealthy state into an original perfected state. In other words, the Messiah comes to cure humankind. The Messiah is, or the Messiah's mission is to restore God's love. The Messiah is the person who sacrificed his life for man. Yeah, so um, why I chose this uh, topic this morning is uh, um, uh, as we now learn uh, the, about the holy marriage of uh, true parents. And that is the, the beginning point of true parents mission as the Messiah. So the Messiah is together, true mother and true, uh, true father together. Uh, they are the Messiah. So um, apart from other, uh, like other uh, mission that we, we know about, like uh, the Messiah came to give rebirth to uh, us humankind, uh, uh, I've, I, when I read this uh, hundok from this uh, way of tradition, I felt that these words really profoundly mention uh, the, mission, the mission of the Messiah. So uh, really God's heart after the fall, he longed for us human beings to go back to his bosom as his children. So um, he sent uh, Jesus, as we all know, 2,000 years ago, with the same mission to establish, uh, to, care, uh, to come and uh, restore his love, God's love, and to, to you know, cure our, or change us, change our, our lineage from Satan lineage to God's lineage and to perfect our state as uh, children of heavenly parents. So he comes as the true parents of mankind. So what is the purpose of his coming as the true parents of humankind or mankind? He come in order to win over the satanic power prevailing in the world and to win the spiritual level. Okay, so uh, why, why, why they came as the true parents? So our true parents came in order to win over the satanic world, the satanic realm, and prevail over the spiritual and also the physical world. So because he comes for that purpose, his mission will not stop or will not be accomplished until he until he has won over over uh, over the last satan of the world yeah so um, as we all know the uh, after the fall god really uh, is a sorrowful God. So he sent the Messiah uh, in the form of the true parents with nothing less but with the purpose and with the mission for them to accomplish uh, or to even subjugate Satan. Uh, so uh, 
I felt like this is very profound words from our true parents. So let me continue. It says the, the greatest words, so true parents is the greatest words we, we come to know in our movement. So the two greatest words we come to know about in our movement is the true parents. So nobody has spoken these words in history. We are the first ones to utter them. So this is how profound our true parents are. So they are true parents. The word true parents is, uh, is very profound. Like uh, nobody in history has ever talked about true parents. But through us, through the true parents holy wedding, this works come about or started from there. So I I believe that uh, our father even said that this we are the first one to 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 utter two parents, the word two parents. So this is uh, very profound and we know why. Yeah. So this is why, uh, this is really an absolute precious gift, Father said. If you lovingly save the position of true parents, your first duty is to become true sons and daughters. Otherwise, you and the two parents have no connection. Okay, so uh, when I read these words, uh, just reflecting also, uh, it's very true that uh, the word two parents is, is really a greatest gift or greatest word that we learn. Uh, actually, we never heard of like a true parents before or before we come to know the messiah or the true parents we never know uh, or we never met someone who is uh, like true as our beloved true parents so uh, this is a very precious absolutely precious gift for us Okay, so without having the true parents among us, we cannot give birth to true children and everything starts from there. That's why God sent the Messiah to human society. It is to make it possible for humankind to build the true home in order for God to become the true God, exercising his power. When can God become the real God. It is only when man has the true parents in human society and through them the true world can be built where divine love abides. And so this is very profound. Without having the true parents among us, we cannot even think of having true children also. So everything started from having the true parents. So uh, the reason why God sent the Messiah among us is to make it possible for us human beings to build a true home uh, through the true parents and in order for God to become a true God. So Father said, when can God become the real God? God can become the real God. It is only possible only when man, when we come to realize or come to know the true parents. Uh, so the new definition of Messiah is the, the Messiah is the person 
who goes through the worst condition then very soon climbs up to reach heaven so uh, the path of the messiah is not really an easy one as we all know and also we read about through the hundoke uh, through our previous hundoke we really even from the beginning from their conception uh, they really satan uh, really try to get from western father said then very soon they should climb so this is very inspiring to me and one of the my moving point when i uh, come to uh, meet the church uh, when i learn about true parents uh, life course it really moves me how 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 fast uh, heavenly parents providence or god's providence move from the the mud hut in bonnet gold to jongjonggo so this is really one of my like one of my inspiration that i have when i study the divine principle and i study about true parents life like how is it possible for a person to live in you know a, a heart that is made out of mud and cardboard to you know being in chung jung room you know in a palace so this really uh, i felt like uh, heaven really shows and uh, true really true parents are the messiah so uh, as a man he must come up from the bottom of human misery he must come to the most miserable nation and lift the human stand the status from the seventh position to the position uh, the seventh position to the adopted son position to the direct son position by physically putting together the kingdom of heaven here on earth that is the mission of the messiah so um yes um, as i've already mentioned yes true father came from really the bottom of hell to uh, to in order to fulfill these eight stages vertical stages and also eight horizontal stages so um, i i felt like uh, we we i am one of uh, uh one of the most uh luckiest or the most blessed person in human history to be able to meet the messiah uh, on earth and so uh, i just want to share a little bit about uh, when I, ca i came to study the divine principle after i study i i have this goal i have three goals uh, that i want to receive the blessing from two parents and uh, I want to uh, like become someone like those up, uh, Jesus uh, had said, dis disciples, to become someone who really, uh, uh, you know, wrote about two parents, the goodness of, or even be in two parents history. So those kind of goal I have after I study the divine principle. Okay, so uh, I almost come to the end of my okay. Uh, but I say the way you can find a artistic relationship with the true parents is to accept suffering. There is no other way. So also this is one profound uh, thing where I always inspired with Dr. Young's uh, Dr. Young's okay that uh, he said, you know. Also, Reverend Isaka mentioned this several times, you know, to uh, to 
come to establish a relationship with true friends means we have to accept suffering because the path of the true parents or for us you know our true parents also gave us the mission as heavenly travel messiah so to become a, a messiah to our people it means we have to accept suffering so father said this is there is no other way but we have to go this way so you stand in a very fearful position because you are participating in a mission during my lifetime so you must be able to echo my heart if you do not you will not be able to lift up your face before god when you die so this is a little bit <laughs> kind of scary <laughs> so yeah we as uh, children who are blessed under two parents we we stand in a position where we we are standing on a position where we it is a fearful position where we can become uh, someone who really support true parents to extend or to expand to advance true parents providence or heaven's providence or we can become someone who become a stumbling block for true parents mission also so uh, it is very important for us to participate yeah so i i also felt like uh hit by these words myself uh like um we are participating in the mission uh during two parents lifetime so uh this is uh really a challenge where i i i also felt strongly during this time <clears throat> as we are um, going into the second seven year course i felt you know true true as i've said earlier true parents is true mother and true father so uh, we are living in a time where true parents are leading the providence uh, directly and then we are participating in that uh, in that mission so we play a very important role also in god's providence so father said we have to echo we must be able to echo true parents heart so um, this really strike me to come to think about uh, heavenly parent and true parents heart what is their heart and their heart uh, as we all know true mother shared um, what is uh, true parents or heavenly parents heart or heavenly parents dream so this we have to echo or we have to share to other people so father said if we do not then we will we will not be able even to lift our face before god and i strongly felt that this really really uh, father really encourage us to you know do our mission as heavenly tribal messiah as leaders to raise 43 couples to become regular members. So during this week, when uh, Reverend Itaka um, said I will share, I also felt, uh, I also tried to think how can uh, I ask Reverend Itaka last uh, week to do a condition, a 21 day fasting and uh, profoundly he guided me like fasting is good but what can you offer substantially to heavenly parent and true parents so that really strikes me a lot he said it's better to do substantial result than you know uh, doing a condition that is uh, more uh, you know exhausting and you know it's good to how he's he I, I really felt thankful to him uh, because he really guided me how about you know doing witnessing yeah so uh, 
this uh, week also, I try to, you know, uh, my goal this week is uh, to meet my family and, you know, uh, share with them. Uh, so I've, uh, I've met my, uh, my parents and my uh, siblings. Um, actually, they know ab about me in the church, but really they don't really know about uh, the true parents. So I have time also to share with them. So I felt thankful to Reverend Itaka for guiding me to do a condition that is more, you know, um, more, um, more realistic uh, in a sense. So uh, thank you so much, Reverend Itaka, for your guidance. I felt it's very profound to receive your guidance. So um, I think that's the end of my hundoke. It's maybe short, but I really thank you everyone for your attention and may God bless us all. Aju. Aju. Thank you, Reverend Fika. Thank you for your message today. So thank you uh, again, uh, Arnold, uh, for for your words and uh, for your uh, yeah, uh, love of true parents and and uh, this message today. And uh, as you were uh, reading and explaining, uh, I uh, realised that um, uh, true parents were. Uh, the first people in history to really achieve the three blessings. Uh, and uh, I, I, I was impacted by that thought. Uh, you know, he, mother and father, as we're reading their autobiographies, you know, really uh, one with our heavenly parent and their heart is you know, truly connected. And, and uh, you know, they really did reach maturity and, and oneness with God. So they achieved the first blessing and that obviously with, with their marriage, they, they achieved the, the second blessing, uh, showing us the ideal model for a family. Uh, and, and then realizing as uh, Arnold said, they went from a, a mud hut to the palace, uh, really establishing the kingdom of heaven. And as we know, when we go uh, to the Champion Lake area, it, you really feel the elevated spirit and heart, and then you really you have the glimpses of of the kingdom of heaven, and it's our uh, uh, sincerity of heart that you know, enables us to connect, so that we can experience what they have experienced, and those words to echo my heart, and to accept suffering also uh, resounded when I was reflecting as. You know, Reverend Ficker was speaking and uh, yeah, accepting suffering you know, to me means uh, a life of sacrifice and a life of offering. You know, to suffer doesn't mean that you, ex uh, you endure pain. I mean, that may happen, but it doesn't necessarily uh, need to represent that. It's just that we accept uh, that we... Uh, are sacrificing our life, our family, our, our, if we have connection to the nation, our nation, you know, to God. Because that uh, sacrifice is to begin the process of offering. You know, we, uh, to echo uh, you know, God's heart, to echo true parents' heart, means that we, uh, you know, for me to really, you know, take responsibility uh, and uh, uh, as Arnold mentioned you know he wanted to do a 21 day fast but uh, 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 Reverend Utaka inspired him you know better off to uh, 
give something, you know, uh, and make an offering, have a result, and and gave him the courage to you know speak again to his family, and I I think that's uh, still our you know, our motivation to do things, you know. So the the way of suffering really is the the way of offering, and when we uh, recognize that. You know, we are living in this incredibly precious time to be you know, walking and, and breathing you know, the same air that our, our true parents are. You know, the time will never be repeated. Uh, and, uh, and we were chosen and we accepted the call and we are, are blessed. And uh, you know, we, we continue to accept the call because you know, our voice you know, should go to the mountaintop and shout, you know, uh, the true parents are here and uh, the kingdom of God is upon us. And it's only when we genuinely and sincerely uh, invest ourselves to make a result, uh, because that's the other key element that I've, I realized a long time ago, nothing happens unless we make a result and then God can work. God can only work when there's a result. And so the more results we make, then the more God is present. So uh, that was some of my reflections when I was listening to Reverend Ficker. So uh, open it up to everyone else to, to make a comment and to you know, share you know, their uh, inspiration and realizations and, and really, uh, uh, don't need to feel uh, that uh, what we say is uh, uh, or shy or, or, or limited. Uh, whatever we say uh, automatically you know, can be uh, a blessing to each and every one of us. So you know, please uh, express yourself. Thank you. So who, yes, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, morning everyone. Thank you, Arnold, so much. I hope you're reading the comments because they're reflecting exactly what I'm thinking and I'm so grateful that you can take us back to a simple understanding of True Parent's Heart. And uh, I really remember reading um, Father saying, just like you're thinking, the words True Parents, why on earth did nobody ever think about it? Why is there no concept of a true parent even come into our mind before father and mother came to the earth? And uh, I'm really connecting to what you're saying. Once again, I just want to thank you for really taking us back to the simple understanding. And I also remember walking along the beach as I was going to join the church, thinking, gee, I wish I could just be one of Jesus' disciples. That would be so incredible. And here we are, you know, it's a reality. So, yeah, just want to encourage you. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Uh, yes, Doug, go ahead. Yeah, I, I agree with uh, I thank you, uh, Reverend Honor, for what your words were this morning. They were so, um, they were really, it's a beautiful story made such good points with True Father's words. And I also appreciate everything that Chris Bruce just said. And um, the experience of, of uh, mentioning a no, of, of parents, true parents and your own parents came to me. I can never forget the experience of being in the grand ballroom. And it was around 1979 and true parents stood up there and said, I want everyone to go home and talk to your brothers and sisters, talk to your parents and beg them. Actually, he used the word beg, beg them to support you, to understand you, to listen to what you have to say. He said, it's very difficult what's coming and it's very important that they support you. He said, without their support, some of you will um, uh, leave the church. Some of you will have nervous breakdowns. Many of you will not even be able to understand um, how to change yourself, really, until you're 70 years old. 
So he painted, he, he painted the picture of what we were up against, changing ourselves without the support even of our parents and family, friends and relatives is really a complicated, difficult thing, you know? And we had to go this very, very difficult way, many of us. And um, it's when I went home, I went home and I talked to my parents and I explained, and my brothers and sisters, my brothers, my two brothers were there. And although they loved me, they couldn't understand, they wouldn't understand, you know? And um, it was so obvious to me how important the true parents were but they thought it was so ridiculous, the idea that this complicated world could be solved by all of us just having parents, you know? They sort of mocked it, you know? And they just didn't get it at all. But over the years, I came to hear such things from some of the most intelligent people in the world. Einstein says the problem is always so simple. They asked him, how do you solve all these incredible problems? He says, I always think of the most simple solution. I imagine it. And, um, and then oftentimes it works. And another really brilliant man, Nikola Tesla, um, he was, he's the one who, who Einstein even said is actually the most brilliant man in the world. And Tesla um, said, um, the answer is always simple, but for our complicated minds, we cannot understand it, you know? And that's why I wanted to share that, that's fine. Yeah, thanks Douglas. Okay. Uh, yes, Jacinta, go ahead. Um, thank you, Arnold, for that. Talk. And um, I was just thinking uh, last, well, I've been thinking for a while about um, why did I join the church? And um, one of the reasons I joined was um, because I was really, I had that, I had to, couldn't express it and um, uh, it was a, like a self-imposed like having been brought up Catholic the self-imposed suffering that you do is um, like don't eat chocolate or you know you do fasting and things like that um, which I've always found quite difficult, um, but I think that very small um, conditions, especially if your life is full on and you've got a family, I can understand that's that itself is a condition, in my opinion, just to to be involved in a relationship with people, and have children and have to look after them. Oh, but Tom, um, anyway, at that time when I was young. I just um, didn't eat chocolate for <laughs> six months. And, um, but the, it wasn't just that. It was like, um, uh, I was really trying to get in touch with people of all different cultures. You know, in my mind, I was trying to study about people who, who were very different to myself. And um, I think what it does is it, it sort of, our mind is like a rubber band. And so, when you do the condition you're pulling the rubber band you're stretching yourself more and more and more and then um trying to understand god you sort of have to kind of reject uh your past and 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 make a new start and then um and then you've got the power to actually make a change to ch to do do something new to do had to have more energy and it did occur to me that sometimes I think our second generation they are faced with a lot of pressure and um, they don't necessarily want to be like us which is fair enough 
<laughs> uh, but uh, they are trying to find the energy and the power to fulfill their deep original mind. And that's why they sometimes they don't listen to us. They appear to be cutting off from us and uh, trying to create the longing inside their own heart to um, define God. So that just occurred to me last night. Anyway, that could be a way of understanding second gen. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jacinda. Uh, got someone put their hand up. Uh, is that uh, Miwa in Oceania there? Uh, I, I just, what happened? It disappeared. <clears throat> Hi, Uncle. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, uh, it's nice hearing from you, Uncle Arnold. Um, I think. But I was just thinking during the presentation, it's good to remember how important true parents are. <clears throat> but um, I think sometimes uh, when we think about supporting true parents and how important it is to understand and uh, and um, really resonate with what this what they feel like, you know, how they said we have to. What was the word? Mirror or uh, what do you call it? They were basically saying to truly understand their heart so that we can also I know, echo their heart. Yeah, echo, that's the word. Yeah, echo their heart. I think for me, like when I think about echoing their heart, it feels really daunting. Like if I look at how difficult True Parents' life was, like sometimes when I hear things like that, I really wonder, like, could I really? Um, what do you call have the exact same not you know like have the same level of heart as true parents like like un like Antu was saying like it's it's already a mission you know living it with your family <laughs> and like dealing with people all the time so I think and and I think there's there is that thing like with with our parents I think I, when I come to these hundo care. I really admire our uncles and aunties and my parents more and more because I can hear their stories. And I think it's um, very, like when I come, I can't speak for all second gen. I, I realize it's kind of hard sometimes to find that, find your own, um, find your own, what do you call it? Like inspiration. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. I think it's it's good to understand your parents, but it's also like kind of daunting. <laughs> That's just how I feel. But I but regardless, you know, we still keep trying to unite physically until maybe it will make sense <laughs> internally. I think it kind of reminds me of you know those superhero movies or like or the Matrix where where these where the people know the truth, and it's like considered a blessing to know the truth but it's also a huge responsibility. And sometimes of superheroes and, and other characters, they sometimes don't want to be in that position. And I think that's kind of the same with us as second gen. Like, it's like, it's like we're really blessed, but then it's also really hard because other people can't understand the same thing that we can understand. <laughs> yeah, that, that's what I was thinking. Thank you. Yeah. Actually, Jeff uh, had his hand up so earlier, so um, go ahead, Jeff. Anyway, I just want to thank you, uh, Arnold, for that very, very nice message. Um, sometimes it seems the Western mind is very complicated. We constantly uh, second-guess ourselves <laughs> uh, rather than having a very simple, straightforward uh, child understanding in a sense. Uh, we become very complicated, which seems to be uh, sometimes we pride ourselves in all our theories and so forth, but um, uh, we need to cut to the chase sometimes. And um, yeah, which which uh, which really came out listening to your very moving uh, uh, 
uh, Hundo K this morning. Uh, something really stuck in my mind. Uh, just the simple way you explained about um, <clears throat> fathers uh, starting from the very bottom, from the mud hut, and then coming to Chunjon Gun. Actually, I also reflected father actually was in the prison. So real, not only a slave of slaves, but a tortured slave of slaves, just going to the very bottom of hell and making a pathway for, for everybody, uh, even if you're living in a mud hut. <laughs> Father's made a pathway, you know, for everybody to reach the palace. So that very simple uh, insight, uh, of course, we all know it roughly, but just to to say it in such a simple, artistic manner was uh, very, um, very good, very good for us. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah, the fact that Father can reach even to the most, um, one could say, uh, simple civilizations and basic and touch the hearts of people and to give them the guidance they need to to grow and um and find hope is just really amazing so uh anyway thank you um thank you arnold yeah. thank you so chris you got your hand up again i just i know we're running out of time but i just wanted to was that did you say me while that spoke is that the right yeah. name yeah is that yeah okay me i just want to talk to you very quickly about <clears throat> this vision of, of connecting with true parents' heart. And if you study <clears throat> unification thought, it talks about your original image. And that original image is alive. And when you pray, that's what you connect to. And when you have a mentor, if you notice that mentor is only two or three years older than you, and that's who you relate to. So when you pray and you connect, you'll be connecting to an original image but it's just a little bit more mature than you are, and that will guide you. So it's so important. You're not connecting to True Father's deepest heart now, but you will get deep inspiration that's just a little bit more developed than you. So pray, connect to that original image because that's your guide. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we have time for one more person if they like to share. Yes, Danielle? Yeah. I just, uh, a couple of days ago, I happened to Google um, Catholic. What is uh, Catholic? And, um, and I was uh, reflecting about that. And at one point that came uh, very strongly for my experience was um, the, the, there is a, the confession. We have a confession. This is the practice that is used in a Catholic church. So I grew up like that. And as a little girl, like, uh, so you have, you go to, it's, you don't see the priest. I don't know if people know what a confession is, but it's like, you, you just go and actually say what the things that you've done wrong, pretty much. And that person, the priest is like in a little boot, so you don't see him. You go on your knees and it's like you're talking to God. And I, I felt um, that that process is uh, it's quite empowering, actually, to be able to find really to to find uh, like an integrity to come to become a person of integrity. Every day, we have to basically you have to come to face your shortcomings, no matter how big or small. And through that process, then if you are accountable to somebody, then you can, like God can come to your heart and cleanse your heart. And I found that, uh, I don't know, in other church, in, but I, I, in the, the relationship with the able figure for the early words of True Father was really like the able figure was, you had, we had to talk to the able figure and really open our hearts and say, you know, the things we had done wrong. Uh, so this is the way I, I related to my able figure when I joined the church when I was 20, 20 years old. So I, I just think that process is very important because I try to do this with my children, just to become, you know, you have to, it's really like a personal growth. 
if I speak, I want to become uh, like a person of integrity. I have to realize and recognize what my mistakes, what I did. And I make a commitment to what can I do to, to you know, what can I put in place to, so that I don't do that again? You know, I'm going to try to put something in place so I can overcome that. And this is, comes also in relationships, you know, in even just hurting somebody. And, um, yeah, so just... Uh, that point there. Thank you, Daniela. Yes, uh, I noticed Janine was very eager to say something, so we can yeah, you can share Janine if you like. Okay. Uh, just um, yeah, just echoing what everyone's saying that we're, it's an incredible foundation that we stand on. Um, last night, Leif and I watched a movie on Netflix about uh, the Apostle Paul. And um, it was set in AD 67. So it was the year that, that Nero um, burnt Rome and, they, and he blamed the Christians. And um, it was just, um, it was said uh, because they think that um, there's a common idea that Luke was the one that, that um, wrote the Acts. Um, it was a kind of set around that. And um, just, it was really so moving to see the early Christians, the, the life and, um, you know, they were being torched, you know, they were being set on fire um, in Rome and they were going to, um, they were being eaten um, by the lions and for, for Nero's um, circus, you know. Um, and just, it was so moving to see their, their life and their suffering and um, just really couldn't help reflecting on um, on True Parents Foundation and um, how we need to uh, really offer ourselves and to, uh, to really be one with True Parents and, and um, we're living in such an important time and that once again where the Messiah is here and the world is, is changing and uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was just a, a beautiful movie and yeah, beautiful things to realise. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Janine. Okay, let's uh, now go to uh, uh, our unison prayer together. I'll just uh, share the screen and uh, we can begin. All right, let's share.
Adieu, adieu, adieu. Thank you, everyone, and have a great day, and see you tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.